In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the first <clears throat> Saturday for the month of January of 2019. We begin this new year. We want to consecrate this whole year to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. For some of us, maybe it's our last year, God knows. For some, it'll be just another year to prepare for, for our last day, our last year for eternity. And we want to make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. This is why she asked that God wants to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and to establish devotion to the first on the first five Saturdays of the month. It really is a, a tremendous gift of grace and God's mercy, because the promise for doing these five first Saturdays, the promise doesn't even match, doesn't even compare to the little that she asked to be done, which is basically the life of an everyday Catholic anyway. And all she asks is pray the rosary of that day, at least five decades. Pray for the Pope especially for his conversion now, and he consecrates Russia. And then thirdly, pray, um, meditate at least 15 minutes on the life of our Lord in the mysteries of the rosary, in the life of Our Lady. We should do that anyway. 15 minutes of meditation a day, said St. Teresa of Avila, the devil will never get a grip on you. And then receive communion on that day, and then go to confession eight days before or after. So what's so hard about that? But the promise attached to it is you'll die with all the graces necessary to save your soul. And there's just no comparison. If people understood this, this, this church would be crowded. There should be crowds all the way down the hill, all the way fall down to Stillwell to the edge of the highway. That's how big the crowds should be if we only understood these treasures. So let's look at another treasure from St. Anthony of Padua. St. Anthony of Padua explains the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus. And remember, who was the first to hear this name of Jesus? It was the Blessed Virgin Mary, from the mouth of the angel St. Gabriel, who heard it from the higher angels, who heard it from Almighty God, the Blessed Trinity. So this name, Jesus, Yeshua in the Hebrew, Jesus, this is what St. Anthony says about it. Concerning this holy name, Jesus, let me briefly quote what Pope Innocent III has written. So remember, Pope Innocent III was the one who approved the, the rule of St. Francis of Assisi. And he also had the dream about St. Dominic and St. Francis, holding up the church. This name, Jesus, has, has two syllables and five letters. Jesus, two syllables, five letters. It has, now think about how many vowels the name of Jesus has. It has three vowels, because J is an I in Latin. So, Jesus in Latin. So, the I would be a vowel as well. So, three vowels, I, E, U. Two consonants, the two S's. The two syllables in the name of Jesus symbolize the two natures, human and divine, in Jesus. The divine comes from the Father, of whom he is born without a mother, from eternity. The human comes from his mother, of whom he was born without a father. <coughs> See then two syllables in one name, because there are two natures in this one person. Note further that a vowel is that which can be sounded by itself, while the consonant must be sounded with some other. So the three vowels stand for the divinity, which being one in itself, sounds in the three persons. 
For, says St. John in his epistle, 5-7, there are three who give testimony in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And then he goes on to say, the two consonants, <clears throat> that which are the, the two S's, stand for the humanity of Christ, which having two substances, body and soul, does not sound by itself, but rather with another, to which it is joined in the unity of person. For since the rational soul and the flesh, the body, make one human nature, so God and man make one Christ. A person is called thus being a rational substance, sounding per se, and this is Christ. And he is both God and man, but in himself he speaks in as much as he is God, not as man, because the deity, the divinity, retains the right of personality in assuming human nature. But the humanity did not receive the right of this personality in being assumed. For person does not assume person, nor nature assume nature, but person assumes the nature. The divine person of the Son, from all eternity, assumed the human nature in our Lord Jesus Christ. So then he concludes, This name, then, of Jesus is holy and glorious, and it is invoked upon us. Nor, as St. Peter says, is there any other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. By this name may he himself save us, who is God, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is blessed above all forever and ever. Amen. So says St. Anthony. And there is no other name under heaven whereby we can save our soul. And this defines why Archbishop Lefebvre had to make the stand he did, which is to oppose, which is so abnormal, to oppose the Holy Father, our Pope, and all the bishops. But there was a time when the, the church was infected many times by heresy. But we are now in the worst of it, because modernism is the worst of all heresies, because it's the synthesis, it's the cesspool, it's the septic tank of all the gross and foul heresies that attack the Holy Catholic faith. So there's no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved. And that's why one of the great sins, said Archbishop Lefebvre, the great sin of our day is this ecumenism, the idea that all religions can join together and work together for peace and pray together for peace. And that's very, that's false. This does nothing but irritate and provoke the anger of God on this world. Because he, there is only one true God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Only one of these divine persons took on the human nature. He didn't take on a human nature in Buddha, or, Ma, or uh, Muhammad, or Luther, or Joseph Smith, but only in our Lord Jesus Christ. That excludes all the others. There's only one truth, Jesus Christ. There's no other. There's only one way to heaven, one bridge. Jesus Christ, the King, and there's no other. And this is why we have to oppose this whole new religion of Vatican II and the new Mass. And oppose these errors of our time, summed up in modernism, but come out all the time. Separation of church and state. Liberty of the press, liberty of the video, liberty of the internet, um, uh, teaching what you want, modern evolution, atheism, communism, socialism, all these errors of our time, ecumenism. We swim in these errors and we got to keep our Catholic sense and keep our Catholic mind in the truth. So we must meditate on these truths, love the truth, and stay close, of course, always, to the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. Without her, we will not survive this hurricane, this storm. We won't survive it. We've got to hang on to her hand and her mantle, and we do that by the daily rosary and wearing her scapular. So be manfully and strongly devoted to the Virgin Mary, as all the saints were. And let's make reparation today to her Immaculate Heart, 
her heart so crushed at the foot of the cross and weeping and spilling so much blood because Our Lady suffered exactly what Our Lord suffered and she should have died. St. Bernard says it was a miracle of God's grace that kept her alive at the foot of the cross and afterwards. He had to sustain her life miraculously. Otherwise, she would have died of a broken heart. And women have done that. That has happened many times in history. So let's pray to the Mother of God and receive and do this first Saturday of January 2019 now in reparation and beg her the graces to become saints and to die in her arms and go to heaven, which I wish you all. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.